Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by DraftKings 2020 Tokyo Olympics Men's Golf Preview Research Picks. First look, there is no Listener's League this week, this week, but if you hit the description anyway, you will find a giveaway for you, a cash giveaway if you choose to enter the draw, and I hope that you would do that for me. Fantasy Football Picks and Bets is a brand new show on Mayo Media Network. It's pretty good. I've hosted the first two shows. Feinberg was on the last show that was out along with Pete Overzet. It's good times. What you need to do is click on that link on Apple Podcast, subscribe to the Fantasy Football Picks and Bets on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download podcasts. But this one is specifically for Apple because I can track that one. Leave a five-star rating, a review that's somewhat nice or really nice, I suppose. No negative ones. Come on, we're doing cash giveaways over here. And your Twitter handle or email address and boom. Uh, the the prize pool is at $500 for the giveaways right now. We get some more. I'll up that to 1000 maybe 1500 if we get enough. So please help support Mayo Media Network and go do that right now. I will be walking through fantasynational.com for this episode to see if I can find the right stats for everything. Plus, I'll be walking through a whole bunch more stuff to learn about this course a little bit. But fantasynational.com slash Mayo gets you 20% off. If you're already a member of fantasynational.com, but you love football and are like, man, I wish there was something like fantasynational.com, but for football, well, there is now. RunTheSims.com, RunTheSims.com slash Mayo will get you all those discounts as well. But there's a founder's price that is happening right now till the end of July. You can lock in that price for life. The site is free to use, so you can go check it out right now. The optimizers, there's going to be simulations. The season-long stuff is always going to be free. But I'd say give the site a test drive right now. If you like it, lock in that price now so you get it for life and you're not paying triple that next year when you're like, man, I should really sub to this site. RunTheSims.com slash Mayo. All my picks will be out on Wednesday in the newsletter. All my show with Feinberg and once the DraftKings pricing drops, Tuesday, I mean, I think it comes out on Friday after you've watched this, so it's probably out for you. I'm recording this beforehand before I go on a little mini vacation to Cabot Links and Cabot Cliffs, which I'm really looking forward to, but I wanted to make sure that I got the content out to everyone and got the research in place so we can go. So I have no idea what is going on at the 3M. We also recorded the pick show with Feinberg and myself before I left as well, so that's just going to come out really early on Monday morning, and we'll have no idea what happened at the 3M. I want to be transparent with everyone out there, but let's jump in to the course for the Olympics, and I found the scorecard for it. So there's the men's and women's. Essentially, what you're looking at is a par 71, 7,444 yards. Kissimmee Gasicki Country Club, the East Course in Tokyo. It's a Tom Fazio design, and it's really weird that the way it's laid out. Now, the only thing I could find for grass type was bent grass. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what had, Golf Pass had as the green type, so that could be wrong. But that's what I'm going with for the moment, at least till someone corrects me, or I get like the GCCSSA or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, and it tells me what the official one is. Until that time, I'm going with bent grass. The par fours are weirdly laid out, and that seems like a really long course for a par 71, right? 7,447 yards. But there are four par fours under 400 yards and three par fours over 500 yards. I fudge one. There's one that's 499. I called that 500. So there's three of those. So there's two in the middle between 400 and 500 yards. So that's strange. There are th there are two par threes that measure 223 and 237. Those are pretty long. There's another one that's at 203. So you have super long par threes. And two of the par fives are at least... 625 yards. I'm assuming that those are going to be uh, three shot par fives, except for like Bryson, maybe. Uh, and then the other one looks like it could be reachable in two. Number 17 is 343 yards. At least if the, that's what it plays from the tips normally. I'm guessing that that is going to be a drivable par four. So it's a really weirdly laid out course. This course last hosted the Asian amateur in 2010. Matsuyama won in 2010. That's how he got into the Masters to win the silver medal in 2011, if you were wondering. But this course is redesigned in 2016 by Tom Tom. 
and Logan Fazio. So it's probably not going to play essentially the same as it did back then. I'd say Hideki probably has the most course experience, but what do I know? I have no actual facts to back that up. Uh, the one thing that the Fazios did was a lot of these holes had two greens for whatever reason. So they had to make like mega greens. So the greens are huge and undulating. There's very little water on this course. There is water down the right side of 18. I'll get that into, to, into a second. That looks like to be really the only one. It kind of plays like 18 at Bay Hill, maybe a little bit easier, but it's just kind of weird. I went to the official website for this course and it highlights like the course on like Google Maps and it tells you what kind of birds are on the course. So that was strange. Apparently it's the most difficult country club to become a member in, in Japan, a couple million yen at cost per year. I thought that sounded pricey, but that's really only between like 20K and 30K per year American, which is a ton of money, obviously. But like when they said it was the most exclusive, I was like, what is this, like a million dollars per year to join? Apparently it's not. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, they were almost going to take this away from them because they wouldn't allow women <laughs> as members, but they uh, changed the policy in 2017 to appease the, uh, the IOC because they were getting a ton of pressure. It was worth noting that membership is just limited to one generation here, and it cannot be inherited or transferred, nor is it on the market at all. The only reason I bring any of this stuff up, because trying to find information for this course, incredibly difficult. I mean, all anyone wants to talk about are the birds on the course, how exclusive it is. But this is what I did find there's relatively no elevation at this course and as you can see right here the par fours they're all like there's one real dog leg to the right i believe that's number 18 if i had to guess but everything plays a little bit right to left going into the greens even two of the par fives play that same way as well the par threes are straight on so pin locations might be a bit tricky but it doesn't seem like any one sort of shot type is a preferred a preference here. It seems like anyone can really kind of play, but it is what I wanted to get into. Uh, it's the course. I don't want to go through every single hole, but it gives you an idea of what you're looking at here. Uh, these are just still photos, so I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to kind of scan through and take a look at it. It's, a, it's the Parkland trees. It kind of looks like Long Colonial in my mind. There are other fa Fazio designs uh, that we're kind of familiar with on the PGA Tour. Quail Hollow uh, was a Fazio redesign for the 2017 PGA Championship. That's the way that they've been playing it. Firestone uh, is another one. Another no-cut event for a WGC, uh, and it's kind of set up the same way. You guys, there's a, you know, you have to hit the fairways. You can't be in those trees. And it's really a second shot course. Like those, that's what we're looking for, for this one. Conway Farms, uh, which has been at the BMW championship three times, 2017, 2015, and 2013. Leishman Day and Zach Johnson were the champions that time around. And Shadow Creek, uh, where they held the CJ Cup last year because they couldn't hold it in South Korea. It was also the site of Tiger versus Phil, the match. The first time around, uh, if you don't remember, Kokrak beat Xander at the CJ Cup and Henley, because I remember having money on, I think that was the one, or was that Zozo the next week? Either way, Kokrak beat Xander at Shadow Creek to win the 2020 CJ Cup. And the water, there's water on this course, but mainly it looks aesthetic more than it being in play. Like there's a whole bunch of it, like right in front of tee boxes, unless you're me, that's probably not going to be in play. Uh, and then there's that water down the right on number 18. So you can see there's a lot of bunkers is the one thing. That's really the protection of this course besides the trees but i mean these are pros they're probably not going to be in the trees it seems like it's like there's a bit of rough but again this is all near the tee box that we're looking at going up like where the trees are there's a little bit of rough but it doesn't look like it's going to be that detrimental this is what i'm talking about with the water like that's right next to the tee box i might put it in that water swear to god I don't think that Joaquin Neiman is going to be putting it into that water. That's just a hunch that I have going into this week. So you can see it's pretty much just straight in front of you. It looks like we call everything like a Supreme Ball Strikers course. This is a little bit longer, although, like I said, a lot of it's hidden in the par threes. And so some of these two of the par fours and two of the par fives. So wedges on those par fives might come into play a little bit more. Like the, the pros aren't putting it into that water on number 10. So they'll, they'll call that in play for this hole, but it's not really in play. 18 is the only one I found that really it is in play for. And it is like that water. Give me a break. That's right next to it. Even, even I'm not finding that one. But here's 18. So 18 is a pretty cool hole. It actually reminds me of 18 at Bay Hill, uh, where you have like from the tee box, you're looking at it. Uh, so there's bunkers in play. You have to play it out to the left. There's not that weird like rough patch, but although there's a bunker where that rough patch is at Bay Hill, but the green is protected. I'm assuming that they're going to be putting the pins down here. So if we go back like down here during the day to the very right side of the green, then you really have to challenge the water because that's not a very short shot. There's a 
500 and let's see 500 yard hole so that second shot's not going to be any gimme uh mind you so if you can hide the pin in the right place there are ways for this to make it but look at the size of this fucking green it's huge and there's massive undulations in it as well being in that bunker is probably not the best thing in the world although it looks deep to me because i'm not going to get out of it again the pros might not have as big of a problem with it but that's what the course is looking like uh for this year uh at the olympics so that's my main kind of what I'm going through, and I want to build a mod. Actually, we can talk about the field a little bit, I suppose. The odds are already out at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, the field is better this time around at the Olympics. Rom, Morikawa, Rory, Xander, Bryson, JT, Hovland, Casey, and Matsuyama are all below 20 to 1. So those are going to be the favorites in the field. And Feinberg and I do discuss this more in depth on the show for the bets, but like, I think everyone under 100 to 1 has a I don't want to say like a realistic chance to win, but I think that they're all live guys like Munoz, Dietrich, Ortiz, Mac Hughes. It depends on how easy and or hard that it plays. Like maybe Mito is undervalued and Perez at 200 to one versus like, you know, they're in the same range as like Kali Smuja and Wacky Valamaki. So they're better than that, but I don't know realistically what chance you have to win is when we think about no cut events, we think about the best players winning. That's normally what happens. Harris English was such a weird outlier at tournament of champions this year, but that's actually a pretty decent field to go look at. It's smaller. Like there's 60 players in this field. Obviously there's no cut, but the back end just isn't good at all. Like there's legit guys that I don't know who they are. We looked up Hurley Long uh, on Google. Apparently he's from Germany. There's this one guy, Anders Lieser. He's from Czech Republic. Like, these aren't good players. Like, I wouldn't know who Adrian Murnock was unless until he qualified for the U.S. Open by finishing really high at the British Masters this year. He's from Poland. Like, Campos, obviously going to be in the field. He's probably Puerto Rico's best shot. Actually, that's not true. Puerto Rico might have some good summer games people for a medal. So I'd say for outright bets, uh, I'm going to be giving them out. But JT had my biggest interest at 14 to 1, just behind the rest of the group, good at no-cut events. The CJ Cup, I think, well, it's not a comp course. It's sort of a comp event in its structure where you have, you know, five to six elite players at the top, then, you know, a decent mid-tier. Then there's, like, legit scrubs at the bottom. It's also a no-cut event. It's in this part of the world, at least. And if we remember, JT has won the CJ Cup in the past. He's also won at Afazio at Bridgestone, or at uh, Firestone, before it left there as well. He's also won in Kuala Lumpur over in Malaysia in another no-cut event that was more of a birdie fest. So CJ Cup was a bit trickier. Kuala Lumpur in a no-cut event was a birdie fest. JT did really well at that. So maybe they, they, that's just sort of, I mean, you're going to have to buy into whatever narrative because it's a very unknown course. So that's sort of my narrative to talk to myself into JT. And he did win the PGA Championship at Quail Hollow of Fazio Redesign as well. So things looking up for some. He's played well at Fazio courses over the years, uh, at, at least the few that he has played in the past. So JT would be my lean on the outset. Um, I mean, Rom deserves to be the overwhelming favorite. Morikawa is underpriced. You could either argue that Morikawa is underpriced or Rory and Xander are overpriced because Morikawa should be closer to Rom than Rory and Xander, and that's just not the case. So maybe there's quote unquote value on Morikawa, or maybe he's properly priced and Rory and Xander are not properly priced. They should be 14 or 15 to 1. So we might see some swing and some drift on some of these odds. So I'm going to build the stat model. Actually, in fact, I've already built it. So we can make this pretty easy on ourselves to try to figure out what's going on. I called this one Tokyo. So strokes gained off the tee, 15%. Strokes gained approach, 25%. Opportunities gained, 10%. Strokes gained short game. Strokes gained short game. That's a combination of around the green and putting. I've listed that at 10%. And then I just threw in sort of the ranges, 200 to 225 yard par threes, 10%. Par fours, 350 to 400, 10%. Over 500 yard par fours, 10%. People should be pretty good at the par fives, but I did weight that at 5% between 600 and 650 yards. And there's just a lot of sand on this course. So I weighted that at 5%. We'll load everything in and search by the past 24 rounds. Obviously, no data from the Open Championship or the Scottish Open or any of the European Tour events. Only PGA shot link events are going to be included in this data. Uh, if you want to sort by strokes gain total, that will at least give you all of the majors that didn't have. So it'll give you the Masters and the Open Championship as well. Hovland ranks out the best of anyone, and this doesn't include his win over in Germany. So that's intriguing. Uh, I'll bet you 20 bucks that uh, Jeff is going to take Victor Hovland this week. Morikawa, number two, and that doesn't include his Open stuff. So that's 
that's pretty impressive thinking about it going in. Although I believe he rated number one in my model last week and I didn't take him anyway. So, you know, I'm an idiot. Rom, Casey, JT, Rory, Peters, Matsuyama, Connors, then Guido would be the top 10 over the past 24 rounds. I speak about Peters. He's 80 to one right now. And where this is a longer course, we know he has the distance. It's been kind of a weird year for him, but he has made three consecutive cuts. He has a bunch of top 15 finishes worldwide so far. The only time we've really seen him because he didn't qualify for the U.S. Open or the Open Championship, he missed the cut at the PGA, was sort of the last big time event he's been in. But I think that he's a, if he's right, he's a class player. And, you know, the numbers do point to him, especially on some of this longer stuff. Like he's really good out of the sand. He plays the par fives that are long really well. He plays the really long par fours really well. And he's not, he plays the long par threes really well. Like he's one of the few guys. And obviously this data is being taken from a really long time back because he doesn't have the weighted rounds to really look into it. Like the PGA, Byron Nelson, Puerto Rico, U.S. Open, the Open, U.S. Open, PGA Championship. So some of these are getting factored in. And like these are pretty hope, actually, this is actually a little bit better. It goes back to 2018, obviously. But we're looking at some pretty high-profile events. There's three PGA Championships in that mix. There's one Open Championship, two U.S. Opens, along with the scrub events like Corrales and Puerto Rico and Byron Nelson along with it. But, you know, he did a lot of really good work in big-time events. So I like him a lot. I like Shane Lowry and Neiman a lot, too. You see Higo is kind of hanging, hanging out around here. By the model, if we date back and go super short term and go past 12 rounds to see who's trending the best right now, I think that could also be somewhat instructive. Take a look at the rank. Morikawa, Rom, Casey, Hideki, Xander, Neiman, Rory Hovland, Guido, and Vegas would then become inside the top 10. Vegas and Mito are the only two players playing this week. They're both at the 3M Open. Obviously, I have no idea how they have finished as of right now. Uh, you see Peters gets bumped in the short term. Uh, I mean, my guy Siwoo Bryson gets a big bump down in the short term. But just looking back at how this course looks, oh, now we're on to Sir Nick Feldo talking about something. Don't know what he's talking about. Um, the art of Japanese golf turf. Okay. Let's not go back. Just look at this course. I think that sometimes having a visual of it can give you, like, t like I said, long colonial Firestone is what it looks like to me. Uh, you can see these still photos, nice Ken Burns effect. on. Oh, a, a, a circle wipe. What a transition. But like, keep it out of those trees and you're probably going to be fine. Uh, it does look like you have to have a bit of length, but we've seen even at Bridgestone over the years. We can go take a look at a Bridgestone. When the last time it was played there, I think that JT won. JT gets really hurt by the recent form, too, because the approaches haven't been really good for Justin Thomas recently. Uh, obviously, at the Scottish, they weren't good. He was bad at the U.S. Open. Uh, at the Open Championship, we don't have the data. But I can confirm for you they were okay. They weren't bad. They weren't great. He couldn't putt all that well. But before that, they were fine. Like He putted himself out of Memorial. At, the, at Colonial, he wasn't great with the Irons. Like The Irons haven't been great for a while now, but besides... Charles Schwab, and they were good at Memorial. He's been playing in some higher profile events in Lynx Golf. And I mean, Morikawa, one week goes from being bad with his irons to the best with his irons and best with the putter at the same time. So if you can find it in you uh, to potentially go to JT, I think that these are the sort of events that he's good at. So WC St. Jude, uh, that's what it's called now. That's why it's in the system. He won that. I know he actually, he did win that. He also won in 2018 when it was at Bridgestone. So you can just kind of look at him. Just take a quick gander at this. BMW, was there a cut at the BMW? But that's a shortened field as well. Yeah, there's no cut at the BMW. That's the top 70 in ties. So what we're looking at here is the players, obviously there's a cut. St. Jude, no cut for the WGC. Tournament of Champions, no cut. CJ Cup, no cut. BMW, no cut. St. Jude, no cut. Honda, yes, CJ Cup, no Dell, yes, but that's a smaller field. PGA Championship, obviously, yes. Sony, yes. Tournament of Champions, no. Both Kuala Lumpur's, no. So he's won a lot of no-cut events in his day. This is kind of his jam because it allows him to have the leeway of not having a good round here and then making it up. Xander's also had a lot of success at no-cut events over the years. But is this the one? No, this is... No, this is St. Jude, so that's Southwind. That's coming up soon. So here's Firestone, the last time we saw it. Again, bent grass greens, if that actually does translate through. You can see the types of players that do well. Like, JT didn't drive it great, but he drove it enough and made it up with his irons and his putting that week. Stanley, 
Thorbjorn. You just see guys like sh even shorter hitters who can gain off the tee, like Kyle Stanley, can compete e with the Brooks and Cantleys and Dustins of the world, and Aaron Wise, and Herbana Lahiri is here too. Maybe Lahiri. That's more, probably more of a DraftKings look when that pricing comes out, but he's at the very bottom of this Olympics field. So you can see there are some guys that are shorter hitters that can get it. Oh, there's Siwoo top 10 at this tournament as well. He did with all oh, with putting, and he might have to do that as well. Leishman, not a huge bomber by any means. Zach Johnson, another one, lost a ton off the tee, but had a great week chipping that week. Uh, and you see someone like Rafa gained a bunch off the tee because that came from hitting fairways. There's many ways to hit this course. That's why I kind of wanted to bring up Corey Connors. I think that he's probably overpriced uh, at 40 to 1, but I do think that this is the kind of course that would suit him well. Like, in my mind, when I look at this course, we just look at it again. Valspar vibes to it at the same time to me. And, that, and that's one of these like par 70 ones that's a little bit longer, just like this course. So it p plays relative to par a little bit longer. Southwind is probably a good one to look at as well. Another place where Justin Thomas is one and where they have the WGC now. So that's just all pointing to Justin Thomas for me. But these are just the vibes that I'm getting. When you look at this, you might see something different. The other thing that I wanted to look at when we look at, where is it here? So this is the entire field modeling out of because I want to use strokes gain total for this last 24 rounds. I just wanted to sort by no cut events and see who the best players are. Rory, JT, Hideki, Peters, Paul Casey, Fleetwood, Lowry, Rom, Morikawa, Hovland. So I guess this Andrew's not as good as I thought. And I guess there's a lot of people who just don't have stats in these no cut events. Where is Xander? Xander's 17th. What, what is getting credited for this? Is there an input? No, just his last eight rounds are what's popping up for him, St. Jude and Bridgestone uh, for the WGC, but it should be different than that. Oh, this because I have Firestone. That's probably why. Let's just look at all courses and see who rates out well. I knew I was looking at something before. So your best players in no-cut events, all courses past 24 rounds, JT, Rom, Xander, Morikawa, Neiman. Those are your top five. Munoz, Rory, Cam Smith, Vegas, Zayden Hout, then Bryson Hovland, Dietrich, Corey Connors, and C. Woo! Kim is number 15th in strokes gain total over that time, because that will still take into consideration uh, a lot of the events that, I mean, some of them have strokes gained, some of them don't have strokes gained. I mean, most of them probably do have strokes gained, now that I think about it. I guess the CJ Cup. No, everyone kind of does, and this isn't even including. So this is just including concession for Justin Thomas. It includes concession, Tournament of Champions, Zozo and CJ Cup from last year, uh, the Tour Championship from last year at Eastlake and the BMW. So we're not even getting back to his wins at these courses, and he can still still continues to perform well at these no-cut events. So that's where my money is probably going to go this week. But as you can see, even someone like, uh, I mean, actually, I'm back on the, the modeling right now, Rosner. Okay, here we go. Um, that's going to be more interesting for DraftKings purposes or top 20s. But I do think that it's going to be a class player, at least a class high-end player, or one of these second-tier players like Lowry or Neiman, that level of player is going to have your best shot. If you forget what happened at last time's Olympics, um, I don't remember what the odds were, to be perfectly honest with you, for the 2016 games. Obviously, a completely different course. It was a Gil Hance layout at a weird course that was built just for the Olympics in Brazil. But Rose and Stenson and Kuchar, one, two, three. There's Thomas Peters at number four. Then you have Appy Barnrat. Bayo, Marcus Frazier, Sergio, Grio, Bubba. So a lot of turnover. So a lot of guys that skipped on the Olympics this time around just might not be there for the qualifications next time. Uh, but you can see that the field itself, like Reed was in there. Keimer was better, but it's not like he was great at the time. Just wasn't all that good. The field is a lot better this time around. Fowler would have been a top-ranked player. And that's kind of it. Now, Lahiri finished near the bottom. So did Vegas. Maybe they'll have a better go this time around. Who knows? But as you can see from, like, the very top of the leaderboard here, like, we got guys. Like, we got real guys. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight real guys. And then you have the second tier from, like, answer all the way down. And I'll get, even give it to Peters. But the, the real cutoff is probably, like, Leishman at 40 of guys who have a chance at winning. Although that 60 to 80 tier with Guido, Norin, Siwoo, Higo, and Peters is probably super live as well for a potential upset, or at least a podium finish. But I would probably try to stick to the very top of the board when it comes to it this week, just because that's just what we've seen from these no-cut events historically, that one of the best players, without the fear of having to miss the cut, can kind of tank away around, but make it up in another spot knowing you have all four rounds. 
So that's going to do it for the research and walkthrough for the men's Olympic event this week. The bet show will be out Monday with Jeff Feinberg. I'll do DraftKings on Tuesday, but you got to subscribe to Fantasy Football Picks and Bets to get your football needs. And we've been doing a ton of content on the Pat Mayo experience as well. So please go back and watch all those shows. We did the Cam Akers breakdown. I got my rankings already out, all the division previews. Need the support for the football shows, just like the golf shows to keep the business going. All right, people, thank you all for watching FantasyNational.com slash Mayo for that 20% discount for golf. Run the Sims.com slash Mayo for the discount on the NFL tools, and that price is going up on August 1st. So if you use the Mayo discount and you lock in that price for life, now would be the time to do it. So check out RunTheSims.com and get in on the tools. If you plan on playing playing. DraftKings or betting on football this year, I highly recommend it. It's all customizable tools. No one's telling you who to pick on the site. You just tell the computer what you want to see, and the computer will tell you what you are thinking, at least based on your input. So runthesims.com slash Mayo. Take the free tour to the site till the end of July, but you want to get that discount in before the end of July to lock in that rate forever, all right? Smash the like button for the video, sub to the channel, do all that fun stuff as well. Have fun. Hopefully you won at the 3M. Good luck at the Olympics. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!